You know, yesterday there was this meeting, the parliamentary group meeting of the Azimio coalition political parties. Mm. And um, they, they met and after that they came out, and that's a headline today, they came out with several resolutions. Resolution, for example, is we are going to suspend the bipartisan talks until our conditions are met. And they've been talking about those conditions and uh, telling the Kenya Kwanza aside, you must do something. So also they say Kenya Kwanza must agree that all Jubilee MPs who have defected have to resign and face by elections. Then also the finance bill as presently crafted must be withdrawn and replaced by a bill that appreciates Kenyans suffering. Mm. And they were given the government was given until midnight. The midnight, midnight today. Yesterday. Oh midnight yesterday. Yes, Not until the mid- end of day yesterday. Oh so yeah, that was to yesterday. withdraw. Otherwise. Otherwise. Mm. They kept they they left it that. Mm. Other- Otherwise what on a mutajua. Then uh, they said they reject the finance bill in total. Now, the otherwise bit is where everybody now hangs in the balance, and that's why maybe the headline in the standard today is it's back to the streets because, as the mere leader said, they'll not resume bipartisan talks as the government is pushing the finance bill that will worsen the cost of living, meaning demonstrations are likely the next step. It's not clear whether that's the next step. Eric, do you see uh, mm. this discussion around the finance bill mm. as one of those momentous things that actually bring the most unlikely people together? Meaning, mm. you have people who support the government, your people who don't, your people who are somewhere in the middle, your people who are, and suddenly there's a finance bill. <laughs> and somehow you're hearing voices that ordinarily had not really sided with whichever political party or whatever, whichever political affiliation we have. Mm. Are we seeing this finance bill as one of those things that will galvanize people to gang up together? I'm using the word gang up deliberately mm. because somehow they have something in common because the Monainchi, mm. the populace, the citizens of the country do not seem to like this idea of the bill. Mm. Do you think it is one of those things? It could be, yeah, but, it's a possibility. It is, but it is not. Yes. Because the the opportunity here would be that there'd be there'd emerge some sort of leadership that coalesces people around mm. the o- rejection of the finance bill mm. or the objection to the finance bill. Mm. There's just noise. What we hear is pocket. Yes. There's this group, there's this uh, union that doesn't like it, there's mm. the other union, then there are people from this region, a few people who don't like it, then yep. there's you're saying there is the unified voice saying but i thought azimio were unified always azimio is just one of the voices azimio is a voice that is saying no to a bill all right mm. but it's not being realistic that's my issue mm. how do you you see this the finance bill is not like uh, which bill was recently passed in parliament pick on mm. Let's say today there, there was a raft of bills that have been. Let's say today there was a, there was a proposed amendment to the Communications Act. Okay. Yes. Yes. yes and yes. and and there was a bill that was taken to Parliament to uh, amend the Communications Act. Mm. So let's call that the Communication Amendment Bill. Okay. Mm-hmm. If there was a rejection of the Communication Amendment Bill, basically what you'd be saying is either you voted no or you withdraw it and you go and think about it and come back later Mm. meanwhile the existing law continues to serve Mm. the finance bill Mm. is basically the one that says this is how government shall be financed yes okay there must be a finance act this is one of those that there must be a law that is passed around this time for how to finance the government it's not one of those that you know you say at you oh, we are opposed or you know so uh, yeah let's re- let's reject the whole thing and then we'll come back next year and discuss it again there has to be a finance there has to be a finance because in the absence of a finance bill the government really doesn't have the teeth the legs the structure with which to actually to realize money. whatever revenues they need to conduct their businesses yes mm. right mm. So because they have to have that 
and because this must also be accompanied by the budget laws the mm. the, the appropriations act and the others mm. these are important pieces of legislation they are now when i look and i hear the leadership of azimio saying no to the finance bill i'm okay with that mm. but that should not be the end of it what i expect and i have said this before even to the leadership of azimio what is the opportunity that azimio is missing here which is a big one mm -hmm. is to show us how they would be the alternative government meaning break down everything that is in that bill uh, the, or that you oppose and say this is what they're proposing and this is what we think will lead to we would say yes. that instead of this we ought to have this because this will then produce this which is completely contrary to what these guys are saying yeah, exactly. something of that sort exactly mm. oh. this entire <laughs> entirety of the budget conversation mm. right from the budget itself is it 3.6 trillion shillings mm -hmm. if azimio is against 3.6 trillion shillings they should come out and say no 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 the government should spend 3.1 trillion shillings mm -hmm. or 4 trillion shillings mm -hmm. and this is why yes now this is how the government wants to raise money these people are going to tax you to including your teeth and your tongue no 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 this is how the finance bill should look like this man called a deputy party leader of uh, uh, of odm the former governor of kakamega county weekly for paranya had chebukati said raila odinga instead of william ruto oparanya would have been the minister of finance, minister for finance. Mm. We should be hearing from Oparanya now, telling us how he would have presented his first budget. Mm. But we don't hear it. We just hear, no. We reject this thing in total because it's wrong. Okay, so what is it? I think, well, isn't that the thing that uh, a lot of times when you hear things like this, that then for those who oppose it, to be able to give a solution is usually a difficult thing, whether they want to admit it or not, for anybody, really. Uh, you want to think about human beings and just the way in which we are made up and how we, we, we have discourse around some of these things, that it's very easy to say this is wrong and it's going wrong, but because of the fact that you're not in a position of uh, responsibility or authority, then you can take the easy road, isn't it? And mm. say, well, look, you should fix this. If you don't fix it, then, uh, you know, we can go to the streets or we can do whatever, isn't it? But is that not the same conversation if you look at all the raft of political promises that were made during the electioneering period? How many of these people actually gave us a cost? How many of them give us the cost element? Tell us these things that we're proposing, this is what it is likely to cost you. Right, so this is what's going to my point. And I think that everything, look at everything that we're dealing with at the moment all right mm. look at the constitution itself look at living out the constitution who's gone through the details of making sure that people understand what it means to live out your constitution and giving it spirit and life when you talk about a manifesto who's making sure that the people really understand what it is about and that you've told them how you're going to cost it look at public participation when it comes to the finance bill we talked the other day about pub don't just say public participation on this public participation what are the very elements of this thing that i'm supposed to be coming to participate publicly about and i think that's the thing even when you're saying no the thing that you're saying no to, are you offering a solution then in terms of how this could work in the interim? If I'm telling you, don't go down this road, and I'm saying it's dangerous to go down this road, unfortunately, when you're dealing with people, mm. <clears throat> you cannot leave it at that. You must be able to say, look, this is an alternative. And rather Especially. than have things go into flames, how about you use this alternative? Especially when you are the alternative and you stand there and you say, and I'm telling you this because I have a better solution. Because I had better ideas of how these things should run. All right? I, I, I look at all these conversations and, you know, all these threats. Now there's an empty threat here by Azimio saying, by midnight today, withdraw that thing or else. And I just sit back and I ask myself, what kind of leadership is Azimio actually having? Because if the Azimio leadership was seriously leading as a meal and seriously looking at the number of members of parliament that it has the number of supporters that it commands across the country and all those things then it should be offering 
that kind of leadership and showing this is the direction when you're coming out to oppose and say i'm opposing this particular proposal you come out clearly and say i'm opposing the particular proposal on this ground and this ground and this ground and this ground as they were speaking yesterday in this parliamentary group meeting their members who are members of the finance committee were sitting listening to memoranda from people on the finance bill okay they are members of the finance committee which comprises the kenya kwanza side and the azimio side the members of azimio in the finance committee have not quit their the finance committee no they haven't they are sitting in that committee when that report will be taken to parliament it will be signed by all kenya kwanza and, and azimio people and even if azimio people don't sign up that report they'll have participated in the meetings that have been listening and reviewing what people they have been saying. They haven't accused themselves from they those, from, accused themselves. From, from those gatherings. Yes. They cannot say that they did not participate. And when it comes to parliament, parliament itself will sit and address these issues. When the bill is presented before the house, there will be a moment for it to be amended clause by clause and discussed clause by clause. What are the proposals that Azimio wants to take to the floor of the House and say, amend this particular clause in this bill, remove this and insert this instead. Remove this and insert this instead. Are we hearing that from Azimio? Nope. We're just nope. hearing them saying, no, vote no. Are they just saying that we are not even going to have a discussion, a conversation around this? Are they saying that we don't have any iota of persuasion that we can go to the floor of the house and try and persuade our members from Kenya Kwanza, even those that are hearing from their people and can see sense, we can actually show them the sense. Instead of putting VAT at 8, increasing VAT by 8% to fuel, let's do this and the other. Let's. There's no proposal that I'm hearing from them. And that's why I sit back and I tell myself, Azimio is completely rudderless and they are wasting the opportunity here. And they will just go and play their dance and song. This thing will be voted for in Parliament. They will come out there screaming and saying, you know what, we rejected this thing, we rejected this thing. And they will not have put any input into the finance bill. Who will have lost? The people of Kenya will have lost. Because their representatives who sent them to Parliament, and Parliament has, is the one body that's created by the Constitution and given power to create budget, will have failed to do its job. You know, it appears that uh, we seem to have gotten into a rhythm that uh, <clears throat> necessitates that opposition by its nature has to be vocal. Mm. But as to providing and stating and stipulating alternate solutions to problems that have been pointed out or problems that have been highlighted, that seems to be something that uh, doesn't feature when we're talking about opposition politics in this country. Mm. Because I would have assumed that naturally, even if our system doesn't allow it, we would have a shadow government. Yep. There isn't that provision in our constitution, but it doesn't say you, you cannot have a shadow government. You, you cannot have people who, for every government ministry, you have an alternate who provides. When you have an issue of security, your shadow minister for security says, we as Azimio, this mm. is what our stand would be on this particular issue. Exactly. On this one, we agree with the government. But on this one, we feel this ought to have been the alternative. Mm. So that the country has an opportunity to listen to alternate voices on each and every matter that we find has been brought to our attention, whether we agree or we find them contentious. Yep. Then the debate becomes wholesome. Have, do you think that there is a transition from, I mean, the obvious and, you know, acceptable grieving process that Azimia went through, that that transition period is not over? Grieving over? Having lost the election. You know something? President, hold, hold on. Having lost the election. So if we're looking through a transition period, this assumptive role mm. that we're talking about of getting into the opposition and doing exactly what it's supposed to do... Mm in terms of opposing things mm. and as well as giving solutions to others mm. can actually not bear fruit if they've not sat properly in that thinking that we are in the opposition. Mm. There could be the thought in the minds of anybody who thinks he's on, on the other side of government that, look, there's still an opportunity here for us to get into this thing. Okay. 
So why don't you pre- why don't why not prepare yourself to get into that thing? That's a good question. Because if that oppo- let's say today something happened that blah 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 abracadabra and Kenya Kwanza said okay guys all right okay we so throw in we, the tower we throw in you come in take it over. Uh-huh. So what would happen the next day? What is it that would happen? Hmm. If they had already prepared themselves to take over government, they had already thought of this how they would, would run our government. I mean, it's not uh, something that's coming out of the blues. Just as late as August last year, this team was prepared to run government. In fact, we'd already been told, I'm already thinking Oparanya is going to be my CS for Treasury. Um, I'm going to retain Munya in agriculture. I'm going to have Joho in lands. So there were already some thoughts. And Martha Karua is going to be in charge of, you know, all these justice matters and fighting corruption and all this, uh, this and the other. So there was already a lineup of things that how they were going to work. There's already been a conversation about leadership in the National Assembly. They are not grieving. They have a, a leader in the National Assembly and a deputy leader and a whip and a chief whip and a deputy whip and one deputy whip has left and has been kicked out and a new deputy whip has been brought in. So they already what's the role of, what's, the, what's the role of an opposition? Or to provide an alternative. Yes, okay. exactly. So and, now, mm. in an event that that is not being done, mm. what would you say is the problem? That's what I call rudderless. Mm. You know, the thing is, uh, the problem is leadership. Mm. Let me ask you something, do uh, If you wanted to garner confidence and you wanted to whip up the confidence of a populace amidst the problems that a country like ours is having beyond just existing as the opposition so you are known you and here you are opposition because you're not in government okay hmm. is this not an opportunity for you to actually state categorically the alternate government that you would provide and how not by saying we'll mm-hmm. provide an alternate government but by shadow boxing with the government at every stage mm. beautiful now that's the point that I was getting to. You know what? Here you are thinking that an opposition should make an alternative if they really were concerned about these things that are being said here. Mm. <clears throat> if they were really concerned about Kenyans really suffering when it comes to paying a little bit more in taxes, if they're really concerned about the high cost of living and wanted to do something about it, you see these alternatives that we're talking about being sought, sought after, they would come out. And I keep telling you, these things are political battles and they're being used to try and continue to gain some kind of expediency. If there was care for people and you are not in the position of office to do something about it and you really cared about what's happening to Kenyans, Mm. you would call your friend and say, look, man, here, we're not in government. Mm. We're in the opposition. Mm. But let me tell you, here's an idea that I have that you can actually use. Mm. If you were really bothered, and that's where I'm getting to, that there is no real bother of care. So all this is just People, dancing to the gallery. Come on. This is it. Can't you see? Essentially, Somebody really cared for your welfare. Essentially, It doesn't matter no. if they had the power of the purse. But if they really cared for your welfare, fine, I can't do it because I don't have the instruments of power. But I have enough in terms of political clout, in terms of the opposition and what that position requires you to do you would see those alternatives that you're asking about. Mm. You would. You Why know, don't you see them? Do you know what you've just done? You've taken me back to primary school. <laughs> you actually, that's what you've done because <laughs> the primary school I went to was predominantly Asian. In mm. fact, when we first went to that school, there were three Africans. Mm. There was myself, my sister Florence, and a young lady called Sophia Mugele. Three Africans Only. in the whole school. Mm. Mm. Now, during your birthdays, some people would bring cake, some would bring sweets. Mm. Now, I remember what my parents could afford to give us to take to school were sweets. Mm. Mm-hmm. I never saw anybody rejecting the sweets. Mm. Everybody took what was given. But it was a custom so that people celebrated your birthday. Mm-hmm. All right? What was. Some even had birthday parties. Mm. Some, beyond the sweets, it was the end of it. But. The parent would do what they were able to do. This is the point I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. And the children were happy with whatever was was presented. I I never saw a time when you said I didn't I didn't pretty like the, the sweet. You mm-hmm. took the sweet because you wanted the sweet. Yes. Now I'm thinking of government. 
And I'm thinking of people who present themselves as the opposition. Amidst this myriad of problems that we have, and I'm listening to the discussions, and I'm thinking, is this not the opportunity this government that those in the opposition have to have gone around the country talking about the alternate things that are available to citizens as opposed to what the government is proposing. Mm. Because nobody prevents them from doing so. Nobody. Nobody prevents the MPs who represent the so-called opposition from making their, every time they go for their funerals or whatever they do, for making their case and say, we, as Azimio, this is what we would do. If you were yes, actually we, bothered. This is what we propose. This is how we see this thing should be done. One doesn't hear it. What one hears is the obvious that this is not helping the citizens. We get that. So then what next? What alternative is there? Unfortunately, this condition that Kenyans are in today, where people are complaining about life becoming a little bit more expensive, unfortunately, is currency that is being paid for expediency. Mm. That is it. Because you're saying, yeah, there are, there are members of parliament who are in the said opposition. There are people who um, are at ward level. There are people who are at governor level, county level, the boss of counties, that can actually see the situation that people are suffering from. Are you kidding me? If you're really concerned, it doesn't matter who you are. I'll give you an example. If you're walking on the street and you see a child in a poor state, it doesn't matter who that child is. There's something that's going to prick you to do something about the situation. True. Right? Mm. Unless you really don't care. If you don't care, you will jump and pass, as we say. But if you care, you would stop. And it really doesn't matter what's going on. But the person who has a possibility and the opportunity to do something about it, I'll say, come, Eric, you know what? I know that maybe I should have been the one in that seat. But let me just tell you, because things are going bad, I was the one, if it was not you, it was going to be me. And let me tell you what I would have done. Maybe it would not have worked. But let me tell you what I was ready to try. And that's what I'm telling you. Kenyans, every time, every time you are told how they really do care about you. And mm. I keep begging you. Just believe them. You can be here shouting and running about in the streets. But is it going to bring the solution? You cannot tell me that somebody is not going to offer a solution because they're not in government. No. In fact, no. opposition means that you say, I'm opposing this because of ABCD. And this is what it should look like mm -hmm. if i'm opposing this cup looking like this i'm saying no 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 it shouldn't look like this it should look like this you have an idea that there should be a better cup yes so, then should we assume so that's what you that should you be pushing also out have there no idea what the thing should look like absolutely not wills is saying are you soliciting for ideas for a government in office who came in to lead without knowing how to do it no way azimio we know how to do this but let the rogue run this Run his, run, run his rogueness. Actually, that do not think as Emir we are here to do the thinking for this incompetence no. of the day. No, this Kenya Kwanzaa is rotten. I we will think, not think for no. it. That gentleman or modify I, the mess. I, I think yeah. that gentleman has a view that he has expressed. Yes, mm. but that is actually not ha ha government's work. Mm. Whether you are in it or out of it. The solutions, nobody has a monopoly on the solutions. It's not as though this government doesn't know what it ought to do. It does. Wow. But part of the reason why it's being opposed is that people feel that they are running rogue. That they are doing things that they ought not to do. Now, if it is known that this is not what they ought to do, then it means you know what they ought to do. How do you convince people you are a better alternative if we do not know what it is that you're offering, mm. how are you a better alternative? It a better is. alternative because you're pointing to the obvious that we know. It's our lived reality on a daily basis. <laughs> you know, and, and that's that's why we have members of parliament, right? We have members of parliament so that they go into the chamber and debate and they try to persuade each other. Those in the majority try to persuade those in the minority. See the side that I'm coming from. Those in the minority also do the same. It does not have to be that, you know, because you sit on that side, anything you say, I say, no. This is Kenya, no. <laughs> 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 Parliamentary group met yesterday and they gave the government until midnight yesterday to withdraw the finance bill 
or face the consequences. And they're saying that, we're, of course, we are opposed to the finance bill because it will worsen the cost of living for Kenyans. And that's why they want it to be withdrawn completely and be replaced with one that is friendly to the people. Did they present one that is friendly? No, they didn't. They said, you go and remove that thing and bring another one that is a bit friendly. <laughs> have they discussed what friendly uh, measures should then go into the finance bill? We haven't heard. Did yesterday's meeting actually look back into, this is a finance bill, maybe they're having finance experts explaining to them, this is the problem with this, this is the problem with the other. This would be a better solution or a better proposal to be taken to uh, to parliament we did not hear it at least they did not address the press with that kind of alternative so in terms of now saying withdraw the finance bill or face consequences one is left to wonder so what would the consequences be or if it was withdrawn what alternative would you suggest yes because you're saying withdraw we get that and Azimio is at liberty to oppose whatever they wish to oppose in the manner that they wish. Mm. There's a small detail, however. The government, because it represents resources that we have given to them, they are not at liberty to do what they like with the resources as they see fit. Mm. So we expect that some direction ought to be given as to the alternatives that we feel would serve our interests better. Yes. Now, that's why we elect leaders and that's why some of them are in the opposition so that they can represent us in these things. Yes. I am seeing an opportunity lost because with an issue like the finance bill, someone like Oparanya, who was touted to have been the Minister for Finance, this is where Kenyans would have understood that this Oparanya knows what he's talking about. Mm. This Oparanya understands. He understands. Mm. He has broken this thing down nicely. It isn't a question of giving people ideas. The ideas are to benefit Kenyans. Mm. And if Oparanya says it, the whole country will know it is Oparanya who said it. Mm. Yes. So even if the Kenya Kwanza government adopts it, they know they are adopting Oparanya's ideas. Mm. But if that isn't there, an opportunity for the opposition to show the sort of government that they would have been leading and what they would have been doing is slowly ebbing away. It is going away. The opportunity to showcase mm. the ability is actually being lost as we see, as we watch. It is, and it's a bad thing. Remember when Mwai Kibaki was the leader of official opposition and uh, during budget time, he and Daudi Murari, who was his shadow finance minister, mm -hmm. would come up with their own alternative budget. They would. And they would say, this is what our budget would look like if you were the ones running government. Yes. This is the kind of thing that you need to see. Mm. And please do not forget that though all those 100 plus members of parliament who were meeting at the parliamentary group meeting yesterday are paid by taxpayers to go to parliament to make a budget. Okay? Yes. Parliament makes budget. Yep. So each of those members who were sitting yesterday and saying no, 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 no to this thing, they are the ones who are paid to make budget plus the others in, in Kenya Kwanzaa. Yes, not oppose budget, make. Make. Yes. So what is it that they want to do with our budget? Already they sat back and they, you know, watched as uh, the budget proposals were brought to parliament. When the national, like, when the executive proposed to spend 3.6 trillion shillings, it was taken to the budget committee of the National Assembly, which has members of Azimio in it. Members of Azimio and those of Kenya Kwanzaa scrutinized the budget policy statement and they passed and said, all right, yeah, government, you can spend 3.6 trillion shillings next year. Okay. Now, government is coming to show how it wants to finance that 3.6 trillion shillings. In other words, Parliament is about to give it a go-ahead to spend 3.6 trillion shillings and to raise at least 1.8 or whatever trillion shillings that they have said they're going to raise in this thing. And now Zimu is telling us, no, reject it. And then what? Okay. The Parliamentary Committee of yeah. Budget and Finance, they all sit and they have these conversations. This is one of the conversations that they have been having in the committee sittings. Yes. When Parliament came back from a recess, this was front and centre when the committees then broke into, uh, broke from plenary and then sat and started to discuss. These committees are not made up of government, um, let's say, government affiliated members of Parliament alone. Right? Mm -mm. They are made up of members of parliament from across the divide. 
I'm curious as to what is being discussed during these committee meetings. Or do we have a situation whereby it's that thing that you, the scenario where you described where we say it is raining and somebody says no because of the fact that you're supposed to be in the opposition without applying some kind of logic to the conversation. What happens during those conversations? Because then it is said that these individuals are also part of the larger group of those that oppose these things. Mm. I am very curious as to what happens during public participation. I am very curious as to what happens at the ward level, at the constituency level, when these conversations are being had. And when these things will pass, those members of parliament who sat on these committees or those ones who went to the constituents and spoke in a certain manner, mm. what did they say? Because these things will pass. What did you say in terms of no folks, we should be looking for an alternative? Whom did you actually represent? What did you actually say? And I think beyond the drama and beyond the, the whole circus drama that we are being fed that these are the things that ought to be looked at when we talk about participatory governance when we talk about even this civic and public education those are the things that we ought to be looking at how fully did somebody actually represent you how do you know that in terms of oversight in terms of legislation in terms of representation that the person that you sent to parliament was actually doing what they were supposed to do because what i see is that on one hand there's this whole brigade where people are shouting but then there's the other hand where people are guarding their little turf and saying you know actually guys let's just make sure that this thing actually happens mm. there cannot be a dichotomy of ideas here they can't you know the the, 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 the truly interesting things about human beings eh? and the way we respond to stimuli a rabid opposition of an idea such as this finance bill mm. especially when the focus on the finance bill is just tax not just tax more tax mm. it's a unifying it's a clarion call yeah. you, you know mm. we, we are being taxed enough now it emboldens even those who are probably fence-sitting to feel, okay, even us, we can stand up and oppose. But then we get that, and it's important. And there needs to be a groundswell of people who are saying, we don't want this. Yep. But then what do we want? You see, this is the other thing. <laughs> what we don't want, we've gotten. Mm. We, we've understood. But can we have something else that we can work with? Because the government, government has to function. Services have to be provided. The country has to continue. If this method, for instance, that the government has chosen to collect more money through the finance bill is the method they have chosen, mm. can we come up with an alternate that says you don't really have to tax people like this to collect more money? Exactly. In fact, <coughs> let academia come in and chime in and say, actually, this method is guaranteed you'll collect less. Mm. This one, the one you've just proposed. And you know the solution that you're talking about, CT, can be as simple as that. Yes. The alternative solution could actually be that thing that you've very said, that mm. you've just said. You can even have opposition coming in and say, you know what? We actually want alternative minds in mm. this conversation. And let people who have studied this thing come and be able to assist you. And another analyze. To make an analyze, right. Mm. And allow you to make a better decision on how this thing would actually happen. Because the truth of the matter, whether you want to admit it or not, guys, mm. truth of the matter is that Kenyans are overtaxed. Mm. It is true mm. that Kenyans do not know where they will find the extra to do all these things that you want to do. So, can you have alternate minds who have studied this economics from top to bottom and mm. have every idea about what you should do when a situation like this presents itself? So, the truth of the matter is that we cannot, maybe the opposition, as it were, does not know and there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> there's not there's nothing wrong with not knowing it does not know what does not know what alternative they would present mm. but are there ways that you can start to think and say you know what maybe there are folks who know and why can they not be incorporated in this discussion why can they not be incorporated in sometimes when you build this because just because you have a government in place does not mean that you cannot seek alternate views from those who are not in government it happens all the time ppps were born on that idea Yes. Governments were put in place because you had citizens participating in administration. Mm -hmm. Around the world, you have examples of them everywhere you go. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know, man. Actually, but there's also something to be gained, yes. negative or otherwise, by joining the fray and jumping up and down and saying, eh, eh, because that is what people are going to pay attention to. Y you know what is of interest? The very constitution that we have, 
that made it possible for us to have a budget making parliament and everything we're discussing here mm. was actually people driven yes we, in this country we don't need many other examples mm -mm. that was this constitution this is now public participation brought about this constitution that we're talking about yeah so are you telling me for instance that <coughs> something as touchy and something as far which has far-reaching consequences as this because governments have fallen due to unpopular policies that they have tried to push through mm. okay mm. governments have seen the dust you propose something and you think it'll get you somewhere and it has the complete opposite result surely we have an avenue that enables us to look at things and disc and discuss things in great detail have we exhausted all the avenues of discussions? I keep bringing this thing back. This idea of, do we involve academia in these things? Because there's something called best practices. Things which have worked in other places. Forget ours. Mm. Can we not look at these things soberly and say, folks, this is a national discourse, okay? Mm. It's not a pissing contest, okay? Mm. No, it's not. Mm. What is it that will serve Kenyans best? If there are things in this finance bill that we find untenable, can we soberly look at it? Not as the opposition has opposed it, but something that we need to tweak so that Kenyans actually benefit. As opposed to this idea of we have said it, it's going to go through because we have said it, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do. Now that mm -hmm. is totally the wrong idea. Completely. Yeah, because you're bringing conflict when there need not be any. Collecting revenue, we understand, is how the government enables itself to have revenue to do what it's supposed to do. We get it. But can other thoughts come in? Because really, if we have this situation where brinkmanship is at the center of our discussion, mm. then we're heading towards a precipice. We, 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 we are not helping ourselves. Nothing positive is happening here. And again, can you imagine? You know, you talked about, uh, is this an opportunity for this voices to coalesce yes it's a big opportunity it is but i said it's not gonna happen because lack of leadership yes when i said that these guys are rudderless mm. idealless and planless this is what i mean this is an opportunity where all these voices are saying no can you imagine if for example azimio had held a meeting somewhere and said for the next one week what we'll be doing is we as the leadership of azimio plus our members of parliament will be meeting with all these people who have issues to raise with their finance bill we'd like mm. to hear from you mm. what is it that you are opposed to precisely and then we shall go and present that in parliament and we shall come up with our own then draft bill and say these this are the amendments given what we've to, been told because of what the people have told us mm. this is what should then form the bulk of amendments to the finance bill mm. having listened and engaged with the people they'd be the ones who are carrying these all these voices but are they there no what are they saying no we are not going to have those bipartisan talks we have until midnight to withdraw that thing or else come on come on like really <laughs> you know the there's something about opportunity. Eh? Mm. There are those who say it wait for no man. And there are those who say that once it's lost, it cannot be regained. We haven't gotten there yet. We're still at a stage where we can take the advantage of this situation that we have and make the best we can out of it. Mm. Because you can't have a country whose main source of foreign exchange is human resource and their efforts. That is what brings us the bulk of our foreign exchange. And then you're telling us we do not have adequate human resource to be able to tease out what it is we need to do with this situation that uh, we have. Surely. Nah, nah, nah. Surely. Nah, nah. That's not possible. That's not possible. Surely. It, the resources available is simply not being utilized adequately. Mm. Mm. But then the phone line is working. I see that someone had tried calling Edwin Oshira. 0719-012-600. That's 0719-012-600. Uh, who's that? At your bamboo life. That's mine now. And it says, uh, the KK government and Azimio leaders are behaving like the viral TikTok comical videos. I don't want peace. I want problem. Always. <laughs> <laughs> is that not an interesting perspective? <laughs> uh, I don't want peace. <laughs> <coughs> I want problem always, mm. always a problem. 
Um, let's hear from James, who's calling in from Nairobi. Good morning, James. Good morning, James. Good morning, Slati. Uh, How you Hello. doing? CT. Morning. Yeah. You said it perfectly well. Clueless, rudderless, zero option. I don't know what else. I mean, by now, um, someone was saying they were not ready. I mean, they were not ready, they were not ready. But you had already divided up posts and all that. What yeah. is the alternative? Mm. What is the alternative? So this is just games playing to the gallery, trying to remain relevant, um, pandering to the masses that we are with you. But the truth of the matter, they are not. I've never had any MP, whether in Nazimi or KK, saying that I forfeit my sitting allowance. Because even during these public sittings, mm. Those MPs are doing sitting allowance and mileage and everything. That's true. Give us an alternative. That's true. Thank you, James. Well, Thank you. Zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. What do you think? So we have uh, this whole opposition to the finance bill. Yeah. And everything that people are saying about the finance bill, particularly those in opposition. And then also you've seen some leaders in Kenya Kwanzaa have also come out to say, to raise issues and say, you know what, yeah, people are saying this to the finance bill. And when they met, apparently, with the, the president during the parliamentary group the other day, it was also a similar, similar issue being discussed. Mm. And people saying, my people and in the, on the ground are telling me something different. Jane Karyuki. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jane. How are you today? Very well. Now, for me, what is puzzling me with this finance bill, the whole thing is that what they're looking for is where they can get money from the Kenyans. Yeah. When you run a business and you start finding that you're, you get, you're getting losses, you look for places where you're going to cut your costs. Why is it that they're not telling us how they're going to cut down on some of these allowances that they have? Mm hmm I wish at least it was a, you know, there was a mix of that. Okay, yeah, we can pass you a little bit here. But even as we are giving in to our sitting allowances, we are giving in to some of these loans that they take. Because I think if there's one thing that probably I've never heard anybody talk about, when you think about the loans that have been borrowed by these sitting MPs and all these people, and this is public funds to buy the houses that they buy, to buy the cars that they, they buy, I mean, because of the benefits they've given themselves, if all that money was to be taken into 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 accounting how much of it is this that they're sitting with mm. i mean for me this saddens me so much i just had tt talk about now the uh, as new you know and he's not saying much about this finance bill and i'm also now wondering how sincere are they mm. for them i think they wouldn't mind the government will get more money and they cannot increase their salaries as we are hearing that they are looking into how they will get their allowances especially the mcs increase so I think at the end of the day, nobody really cares for them in a inchi. A very, very sad situation. And I don't know how Kenyans are going to get out of this whole situation. That's very true, Jane. Thank you very much for calling. Let's hear from Timothy in Bungoma. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, thank you for joining us. Please switch off your radio. Please switch off your radio, uh, Timothy. Okay. All right. I'm speaking from Bungoma. I'm saying concerning the issue about what is happening in the government, I do propose that uh, the president has just given us a good option of patriotism. Mm. And I do believe that uh, just like a father giving some prescription to the children is best for our country. Mm. So 3%. Yes, it's a patriotism, according to me. So you support the finance bill? Yeah, I support the latter. All right. Thank you, Timothy. Okay. Okay.